right. I always forget something. Ah, uh, it's okay. Hello, I'm Alex Grubard. I am Alex Grubard. <laughs> this is Colin Armstrong. How are we doing? Welcome to the Scene Stir. Scene Stir. I have no idea what I'm calling this. S T I R. S T I R. Do you have a logo yet? Uh, I've been starting to mess around. I'm debating of just calling it Grubard with an exclamation point. I think that's a better name. And it maybe is better. Also, then I can make the poster like a parody of Gutfeld. Ah, uh, and so, then Andre would be like, do you guys get me? It could be that. I like that. You know, you like that I say that all the time? It's you like, like my, my catchphrase? It's, I, I'm not even lying. It's my favorite thing about you. Oh, no. <laughs> the that's literally it. Oh, that sucks. I have so many good qualities. No. I have a ton of good qualities. I, but the catchphrase kind of trumps it all. A nice guy. I'm yeah. a positive. I'm a mm. sweetheart. They're not, you're not. Those are all really the same thing. Yeah, kind of the same. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, you know, I'm uh, technically sound. No, no, uh, definitely uh, not. This is our no. third try. Uh, yeah, so definitely second, we, uh, or second or third. Second or third. I like to lie. Hyperbole. This is our eighth time trying to record this podcast. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying hard. Kyle is here with me on uh, the Scenester. I might just be the Scenester. On Grubard. Scenester. On the pod. Scenester, S-T-I-R. Right, exactly. So it's Where comedy is shaken, not stirred. Yeah, oh, I love that. That's amazing. I'm in. Thank you, baby. Patreon, give me a cut. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the Patreon later. <laughs> uh, you know, after the first season. Of oh, like yeah. 50 episodes. Well, it'll be more like 500 <laughs> if you're with your, tech, with your technology blunders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, technically, 500 episodes recorded, 250 released. <laughs> I got you. Uh, we are talking comedy scenes today. We're talking scenes in general. Uh, but yeah, focus on comedy and yeah. a lot of comedians, having been a comedian. So yes. we, here's the deal. What we're going to do is uh, we're talking about New Brunswick uh, today. We were talking about it earlier, just the two of us, for ourselves. <laughs> for nobody. <laughs> for nobody, but, uh, and we're recording, li- uh, not live, we're recording, recorded at Pet Shop. Underneath, in, City. in the in the in the wine cellar. In the wine cellar, PS Wine Bar. Yes, sir. Uh, we do a show here, uh, you know, me and Alex Nicholas run a show here every first and third Thursday of the month. The two Alexes. People seem to enjoy it. Yeah. We enjoy doing it. It's my favorite show in town. Colin's here all the time. Yeah, we love having him. Oh, yes. Uh, but we're here to talk about New Brunswick because I was not, I, I ventured down to New Brunswick. Yeah. It's maybe 30 to 45 minutes uh, yeah. down from Jersey City, but... Uh, I, I ventured, I go, I do things there, but I'm not. I was never like a part of that scene. And yeah. I've seen these are two different scenes. Jersey yes. City has its scene. Uh, really, there's like three scenes in Jersey, well, or, there, or there was. It used to be North uh, New Brunswick and then South Jersey. Yeah, I would even say. Would you say the New Brunswick and the Asbury scene, Asbury Park and New Brunswick are the same? Scene? They, I, would I say they're a little different. I would think they're a little different. Yeah. Uh, they're really the main difference is Asbury was more indie and less mics, more shows. That's very yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and Asbury Park also great. Super Asbury's Park. got you know Ali May runs one of the best shows in Amazing. fucking Jersey. Capital Line is uh, f- yeah, probably the best show. Yeah, uh, certainly the best indie show. I would say. definitely it's Power Bottom. Not to, yeah, oh, um, sorry, I, I've never bad. I've never never had a bad time there. It's, it's always the best. so incredible. She um, does a great job, and uh, you know, and obviously she's just, she's just funny and cool. And yeah. anyway, so and we have so many funny cool people in Jersey. North Jersey is kind of like its own scene. All of these do blend together as one like mega yeah. scene. Uh, you know, obviously it's also outside of New York, so it gets forgotten, but it is a big scene. Well, now nowadays, really the the, the main it's like when you think of Jersey, it's like North Jersey and like chat like like really there's like nothing happening in Central Jersey almost. I guess but besides yeah. besides like the Dojo, yeah. Stuff. Well, Dojo's not central. No, Dojo's no. Is still north. Yeah, Morris it's north. Plains, yeah. New Jersey, basically more yeah Plains market. Yeah, Dojo comedy really great. Best. But we're gonna talk about New Brunswick. You started down there. Yes. You went to Rutgers, which I, is at New Brunswick. I started comedy at Rutgers, uh, and I started hitting mics pretty hard around like 2018, 2019. Got you. So, yeah. So, let's talk 2019 when things were probably thriving pre-COVID. Yeah. You know, COVID is not even on the tip of anyone's tongue. Mm-mm. Nobody knows what it is. I remember joking about COVID in a basement show. I found out about it here. No way. I was, uh, yeah, I was literally standing right over there. Yeah. And uh, I was scrolling Twitter, really enjoying the show. <laughs> no, I was seeing something. I already knew that, like, Tom Hanks was sick. E- oh. I was like, Tom Hanks is ill. Yeah, and uh, yeah. then <laughs> I was over there, and they were like, basketball is canceled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The NBA is canceled. I was like, I guess Tom Hanks is 
maybe gonna die. I, I remember, <laughs> you know? I remember in college, I was we were all like joking. I was like in like a packed basement, like doing comedy, joking about, oh, I hope no one has it. And then the next day, like the school shut down, everything. Yeah. So everyone had to go home. It was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. You were in school at the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm very young. I'm like a young hip guy. You're a young guy. I'm You're way, young way younger than most people. So a young, a young adult. I'm like a pretty. I don't you know, I have any gray hairs or anything. You don't. No. Oh, they're coming, baby. Yeah, it's pretty sad. No, you'll be all right. You're in your prime. I have nose You're hairs about to now. Be in your prime is what I have nose hairs coming out of my nose. Do you have ear hair? Not yet. Oh man, I've got hair that just comes out of like. I, I always thought ear hair was like inner ear, ear hair. It comes out of like the the lobe too. It yeah. comes out on like the top. It's ba- anytime my, like my girlfriend notices the nose or ear hair, she makes me feel like really old about it. Because uh, she's so young, she's sixteen. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she is younger. Than 16 is no, no, she's right. 24, 24. 24, Great age. Yeah. You guys get a good. Uh, We're, good yeah, twenty four. I'm twenty seven. That's normal. Ten year anniversary coming up soon. Aww. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I'm still like, aw. Aw. So, oh, so, so yeah, you're too nice, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am too nice. Too nice. Yeah. Uh, it's becoming a thing. Well, guess what? I'm going to be a dick. It's going to be Ooh. a whole, th- whole. I'm a heel turn. Heel turn, Grubard. I've been talking about it for a year and a half. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I want angry Grubard. Uh, I do. I get want angry. I want pissed. I want pissed off Grubard. Yeah, when you get, I've, I've seen, I think I've seen you like pissed once, and it's like the car, it's like, I get like, you're very quiet, but I can see steam coming off your head. Yeah, you know, you're like, sure. oh yeah, get that bulge right here, this vein. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I want to hear about New Brunswick. I do. You were telling me before uh, that there's a mic every night of the week in New Brunswick. I, New Brunswick in New Jersey around like 2010 to like 2019 was predominantly like the. Pl- if you were in Jersey, that was like a really good place to be if you're starting comedy or, or wanted to get consistent stage time. Here's a question I have. Was it mostly mics? Like there yeah. were some shows I sh- it was and like, So you know. it was mostly mics. The stress factory was obviously the predominant thing. There was a lot of shows that were underground indie shows that were in New Brunswick or uh, Livingston area okay. that like students would put on or, you know, other comics would put on. But they were very like underground kind of secret you know byob type deals i remember uh hearing even recently but a hearing uh back then when i moved up i moved up to New jersey around that time yeah a lot of things were like basement shows ba- basement shows were, were they like frats were they like what kind of i've done a good i started out in the new brunswick basement scene like yeah. my first like paid gigs were in the ba- it was it was frats i would do shows opening up for like punk bands yeah. like I would go up there and host and do comedy while they were setting up their shit mm-hmm. and just no one was listening right. but it was just like one of those things where I was like this is what I'm doing you know yeah. um, it was a lot of them were like comedy shows like you know just like people come they would stand like no one was sitting uh-huh. I would literally everyone would be standing and watching comedy and then I would get up and do comedy for people standing like right here it was yeah. very strange, but all, very lovely. Very I, lovely memories. I remember doing frats uh, yeah. when I was at college in, in Philly at yeah. Temple. And I specifically have this one memory of playing a, a frat. We did a comedy show there. One of the comics in town was like a, a member of this frat, and he threw a show. And they were so into it, but this one guy, one guy specifically, there was like a vent going down, like a big vent. And whenever he loved something, he would smack this <laughs> vent. And it was like... <laughs> Just the most frat thing. Yeah, ever. yeah. Yeah, dick joke. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll, like, I'll never get that image out of my head. It's, of, like this guy. I mean, I don't want him to stop because he's having fun. But like, are you insane? It's insane. <laughs> I remember performing one of my first. Show, I was like doing comedy, and like, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So bad. Yeah, that's that's really bad. Yeah. Hot set, hot mic, hot boiler, hot mic, hot boiler. The boiler room was a was a mic up here. So walk me through the mics though. Uh, down in New Brunswick, I want to I want to hear about it. I be, I did a few of them. Yeah, to walk me through the routine of the week.
Mm-hmm. And this was strictly comedy at the Scarlet Pug on Monday? Don't say that. People get offended. Oh, <laughs> you get a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was kidding. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But he, you know, he would do it, and it was like, I remember going <laughs> there for the first time, and just being like, I can't. <laughs> well, I have seen it happen on Mike on Pods. Sure, and he like, <laughs> spelled it right, and I'm like, actually, I'm really impressed that you know the name of this so well. well. <laughs> and it's shake and not stirred, and I'm like, <laughs> good, good call. That's thanks. Hell yeah. Um. And it was like no one was ever there. But he would, you, you could go and he would give you 10 minutes. And it was very humbling. And it was very like you could go and just talk to nobody. It got you comfortable just with like silence and bombing. And he was Comedy for no people, which is most of everyone's career when they're starting out. Yeah. Um, Here's a question I have about that. Yeah. 10 minutes. So New Brunswick, I'm sure there are people that are hitting basically every mic or yeah. every mic. So, And then I'm sure there's other people that are kind of just going to the big ones. How many people are going to most of the mics? Because if you're getting ten minutes, it's not twenty. No, no, you yeah, know? yeah. It, it, it was, it was. No one was there. Like it was. Sometimes it was packed. And it, the thing is, it was a Monday at a bar that a college bar. Yeah. So no one was there. I'm pretty sure they were open just for like the mic and uh-huh. like townies. But there were some nights there where it would be like fucking thirty people. Everyone gets ten minutes. The bars up until two in the morning. We're wow. ha- we're having fun. That's amazing. It, yeah. But most of the time, it was 10 minutes. I'm doing a set for some guy who's watching the game, and I'm annoying him. Sure. Uh, if but you've... there are other, other people going up. Yes. Yeah, you're not the only person no. going up. Um, Usually you get, what, eight people? Yeah. So I remember, like, sometimes I would walk in, I would show up late, and it's just Q, and I'm like, <laughs> just because yeah. he because I would walk in, and Q would be like, you're up, and then I would just be doing comedy for Q. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. That's a way to start. That's a way to start. Uh, so that's Monday. So that's Scarlet Monday. Uh, Tuesdays was this. Uh, it was run through the school student organization. It was called like Rucker Stand Up something or another, and it would. Uh, it was in like you know one of the campuses, like a like a event space in the campuses every Tuesday. Um, a lot of like student, you know, a lot of student aspiring comics who are students. Uh, a lot of improv people trying stand up for the first time, and then you know people who were, you know people like people in the in the city in New Brunswick who were like coming to do a mic because it, you know yeah uh, because you know we're doing comedy for like people who are like new it's like doing comedy for an audience right which is like invaluable when you're starting out and especially like college students and that are going to that I feel like they're they're artsy a little bit you know they're they're gonna respect the the idea of what you're doing you're also. It, you know, yeah. of age, uh, you know, it's age, age appropriate. Were people like in their thirties or whatever? Or yeah, twenties going to that. Too? Uh, yeah, there yeah, was there was oh, people. Right. There were like older people. Like they would go. Like it was very cool. It, it felt. It just felt nice because um, they were allowed to. It was like open to the public kind yeah, of thing. Just and what students, what what, what the the guy who ran it, uh, Akash, what he would do is he would bring in a comedian, like a like a professional, like a working someone who was like probably like four or five years ahead of us. Uh-huh. And bring him in to do like a set, like a paid set, and then stay there and like do like a Q and A, so you could like pick their. Br- it was very cool. You could pick Rattle their up brains. Some names. Um, if you remember, have I, you? Re- I mean, are they people you see you now regularly? I, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me why you don't want to. Just, you don't have to, but tell I'll, me what, what specifically about it. It's equal parts I don't remember, and equal parts I think back, and I'm like, they probably should have been doing that. Sure. Yeah. I, well, that's why I was like, it could have been guys, you know, that were yeah. posting the yeah. like, uh, at the stress or something like that. Um. But yeah. So that was Tuesdays. I thought it would be people we know. Like, no. You know, well, crazy. yes and no. <laughs> I got you. I'll I'll tell you more later. All right. All right. Good. <laughs> I don't you need. Don't to, I don't need. Like I don't you. need. I don't need two people texting me like. Did you? <laughs> I heard it's. I heard it's just Grubard now, and you talked shit about me on 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 the Grubard podcast. What the fuck's <laughs> up with that? <laughs> this is why I need you to do it because I need people to think. Yeah, the engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, I need everybody. I'm just trying to change my mo. You know, uh, what people think about me? Yeah. No. So okay. So that was. Uh, where was that? Also, was it in a classroom? It was in a uh, event space on the Livingston campus in Rutgers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's Tuesdays. People did this. Yeah. He got, he got a lot of people going. Yeah. A lot of people went to that. 15 yeah. Signups. Pretty, pretty much like Good 15, day. sometimes like 20, 30. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it was, it was free, you know, like so a, I'm hearing like 20 or 30 people are hitting these mics. The yeah. Scene is like 30 people deep. 
yeah. deeper than that, but probably but like your core. Members. Well, you got to remember the the scene. It's it's loose. It's loose in that sense because it's like a lot of people are trying it for the first time in New Brunswick. It's like you know, Rutgers, A lot of like you know, seize the day. Life is short, motherfuckers who are like you know in college trying out new shit. Sure, you know, and then you would have like the core people who I would. I aspired to, to like to, to be like when I was starting out because I I so desperately wanted to like separate myself from like not that you know the what Rutgers I mean thing. I didn't want to be like seen as like oh just some student like I actually like trying it out like I was like this is fucking what I want to be doing yeah 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 um, you're not one of these people I'm like sometimes I go to drum circle no yeah I, I and then class. and that's what it was like just just like people that were like you know theater kids or music adjacent right. who were like trying it out which is fine I don't care but I just didn't want to like be like it's not okay it's <laughs> they should be assassinated uh, yeah. but in the biz we call them tourists but but those names I'll name the people like who I would consider like in that sense, like the scene, it was like Franco, Danger, it was Alex Nicholas, it was, yeah. was Ali Mae, Joe McAndrew, Tito, Brian St. John, Tyler Langless, uh, Baker Bone, Donish McBool. Yeah. Like a lot of people. Yeah, Donish was hitting these mics? Yes. That's cool as fuck. Donish told me. It's cool that all of those guys. I remember years ago when I first started, Donish would tell me like that's how he would he would just do these mics. until, yeah. And he was like one of the funniest people I ever met. Yeah, right. You know? I get that. Uh, you know, I think there was a, an era of New Brunswick where it was uh, Rami Youssef was probably there. Rami, probably a little after, uh, oh, Ge- a little before you started. Gether, Dina Hashem went there. Wow, there's a lot. There, it's like you know, it's not like prestigious, but you know, it's got the it's got the bones of like some really great comedians. The legends came out of yeah, there, I would know? say so. So now let's move on to uh, to Wednesday. Wednesday, you saying was a big day, and also yeah. this is one reason why there was such a scene in New Brunswick, and uh, you know, not exclusively, but pretty much any scene, a lot of scenes. If there's a club there, yeah, it that's the center of the universe, and a lot of things spring out. You know, around that, and there's the Stress Factory comedy. Yeah, Wednesdays were a big day. Right. It was Stress Factory, which is a bucket. You got three minutes. You paid like seven or eight bucks. It was a ripoff, but people just it was electric to be just just to be there for like to, like to do, you know, stand up in an actual club. Like I would have paid twenty bucks. Like I, yeah, I was I was it was bright eyed and you know. Yeah. Um. So Wednesdays were cool because. There was Stress Factory, but down the street from Stress Factory, this place called Court Tavern, I think the name was, and it was this like dingy old shitty bar, but downstairs there was like a basement event space, and on Wednesdays there was this uh, black room, it was run by uh, Tina Graham, I think her name was, and it was like, you know, she would bring in like fucking hilarious comics just from like the Bronx and shit, just like the funniest Philly, like the funniest fucking people I've ever seen, I've never heard of them in my entire life, Yeah, probably still don't know their names, but they're fucking hilarious, and (laughs) what she would do is if you showed up really early and if you a- asked nicely, like you would like people would be like, you have to say, please like she's a big manners woman. That's cool. I actually got it like that. <laughs> if you, if you showed up early and you respected her and you asked nicely, she would put you on before the show. Like the host would say, we got some newbies and you would go up and like four or five people would go up and do five minutes and you would either do good or get just people would roast you on stage. They'd be like, I remember I was, I went up there and I was, I think I had like uh, sandals on or some shit. Mm. And one person was like, you know, socks have an ass. I was like, all right, I'm that. Thank you. Like, it was just, it was fun. It was a good, it was like one of those things where I was like, oh, like, oh, you, you made fun of me. I don't have the tools to deflect this yet, but I'm, it's fun to know that I one day will. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's a very, it was very, you know, self-hating. <laughs> Yeah, it was very like I have to hate myself to a certain degree that I want to be doing this. Well, I think that definitely separates you from the like stand-up yeah. student tourist. Yes, you know, yes. Too, of like I'm willing to be in this room that's the, not as comfortable, but is awesome. I, yeah, well, you're enjoying it. Well, that's it. that's why I liked New Brunswick so much because I was just constantly thrown in positions, like cues Mike on Monday, constantly thrown in positions that sucked. Yeah, and it just got me like really comfortable with being uncomfortable, you got, you and that I think I think that that is the like one of the mo- that's what whenever people you know people always ask comics who've been at it for a while like what do you need I'm just like do everything yeah that's the most important thing I think for for me was when I was getting coming up is just doing every shitty thing I could think of yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> it's just how, how how can I ruin my day today yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah I do not want to go to sleep <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I just yeah. want to be thinking about this for exactly the, the whole time so so Wednesdays you could do that room so yeah you got 
Stress Factory, Court. You, you do Court Tavern. You do that. You get up early. You go to Stress Factory because it started an hour later. Uh-huh. Throw your name in the bucket. If you got up early in the Stress Factory bucket, you could do your set there. And then you could run back to Scarlet Pub, the place where the Monday mics are. Right. Okay. And there's a mixed mic, like like acoustic guitars and poetry and comedy and shit. Uh-huh. And you can just do that. And that's great because the people that are playing music and reading poetry are like a respectful, regular crowd. And yeah. so on a Wednesday, you could hit three legit spots in front of real people. You're getting a lot of a big variety of different and types of time. Big variety. Yeah. yeah. And this is what um, I remember hearing Donish talk about this because he was like, I would just go to these mics and try out my jokes in front of like different types of people. It was, it was basically like you were like emulating road work. Yeah. I see. You know, you right. could you could just do you could just do a but you could do sets in front of. You know, fucking like a, like an all black room. You could do sets in front of the people that would, for some reason, go to a stress factory open mic and watch. Right. And you can do it in front of like you know young college kids, like and see what works, what doesn't. You're also getting like Mondays. You're getting ten minutes. Wednesdays you're getting three. You're yeah. getting five. You're getting six. You you know you're getting like different set times yeah. too. Uh, sounds amazing, and yeah. especially on a night like that, Wednesday, Wednesday's comedy night. Love mm-hmm. that. Uh, what uh, what about Thursday? George Street Co-op. George Street Co-op. And so this is more, again, this is probably more friendly room. Friendly room. It used Mostly to be. It comics, used to be twice a comics. week back in the day, but now it's just the the once once All a week. All comics, right? All comics. It was upstairs of a vegan grocery store. <laughs> yeah. It still is. Yeah, it's a cute little like it's living nice. room. It's a small area. Very cozy. You could probably, if you wanted to run like an arena style show there, you could probably fit like. 30 people max You're right yeah there's a kitchen or something. there's a kitchen yeah. sometimes you'd be on you'd be doing a, a open mic and someone would just be there like washing carrots <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like a very it's a very bizarre situation the store aspect, but it was see. it was awesome it was just it was just people who wanted to come and try their jokes out and that was another like you know it's like a good community the co-op the co-op uh so it also and the, another thing about new brunswick these these shows for the most part these mics is that they're they're pretty much walking distance. You can kind of like they're downtown. Yeah, right. Uh, all like all Livingston campus one. Was it, it's walking distance, or you can catch a bus, a Rockers bus, which is also open to the public for, for free really? for free. Huh. Well, yeah, you know, very. Ex- has something going for it. It's yeah. I I'm a big fan. Public transportation. Mm-hmm. So co-op people love the co-op. Yep. Uh, you know, comics still talk about the co-op like you know, there's still one on Sundays, right? Was Sundays that going on at the time. Yeah, so oh, Thursdays so and then Sundays. Thursday. So what? So what about Fridays? Fridays was. Uh, I have a mic on a Friday or Saturday. It was Friday and Saturday. So I think Saturday might have been like the only day where there wasn't a mic going on. Uh-huh. Fridays there was um, the uh, oh gosh, it's closed now, but it was called Chamber Thirty Four. You might have the record store. Record store. Yes. Forty three. Forty three. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and that I did was a in show there once. That was in Highland Park. Yep. I did a show there once. That was the first time I bombed a paid show. <laughs> it was very. Yeah. It was very sobering because like, I was like a year in, and I was like, I am the best, you know. And then I, <laughs> I ate it in front of like a packed crowd, yeah. in front of like people who I respect in the scene. I was, I was so upset. First time I ever did a Don't Tell was there. No shit. Yeah, it was a Don't Tell Don't, show. Was that uh recently? No, no huh. not really recently. Yeah. No, it was um. Also, I think maybe pre-COVID, but like okay. right before, so it got COVID yeah, yeah, yeah. It was when Chamber Forty Three was open. It's it, yeah, you're right. It, it's a cool room. Um, yeah, I thought it was really cool. It was yeah. fun. Uh, it was great. It's like yeah, it's really cool. It's like narrow but really fun. I did not. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike somebody. I know. Uh, but yeah, no, I, right. It was like a hit place. I was kind of like, why isn't there sh- uh, shows here all the time? But now apparently there was. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah it was. There was they uh, had Friday Mike. Friday Mike, but it record store. But it felt like a show. Yeah, totally which is the exactly. important thing. It was a cool. It's cool. I remember yeah. that. That was cool. And I remember walking around Highland Park and being like, "This is this is pretty cool." It's yeah, great. and and they would do. I think they did like two mics a month and then two shows a month. Oh, okay. And then yeah, it was like something like that. It was very cool. You want to um, who ran that? I think Chelsea Morosky ran the mics. Oh, all right. Yeah. Nice. Um, another Jersey Jersey friend. She's the best. Oh, yeah, Chelsea's great. Saturdays. Uh, yeah, these people are all great. I see. Yeah. Also, there's an appeal of uh, the people that are running some of these mics are, you know, very funny. You know, That's yeah. Is sometimes rare. A lot of times, like people will start mics because they're brand new. And from what I'm hearing, at the very least, even if they were brand new, they're still doing it. Well, okay. And, and now that's today. that's a huge distinction because yeah. I it's kind of it, it annoys me in a sense, but I get it. But the advice that I hear comics give younger comics now 
is start a show mm-hmm. or start a room. Yeah. That way you will accumulate stage time. Sure. And it's technically good advice, but the advice that I got when I was starting out was go to as many shows as you humanly can and just absorb what's going on. I think that's excellent advice. That was the advice that I got because, you know, if you're running a show without the experience, there's a lot of stuff you're not, like, getting a spotlight, getting the mics, you know, where to see people, how to do it, getting a spotlight. <laughs> you know, uh, me that I have to go home before this show today to get my spotlight. I literally was thinking, I was like, I wonder if Kyle will walk up the hill with me to go get it. He forgot a spotlight for the Not show the tonight. Spotlight. Yeah. Ten dollar Amazon. And if thing. you would just we'll listen, uh, you know, if you had listened to my advice job. all those years ago, <laughs> then we wouldn't be in this position. I don't know why I don't leave it here. Uh, like an idiot. Anyway, um, yeah. But but, uh, you're, but it's like it's like you're, you're, absorb yes. the things happening at these different shows because people do it differently. You know, yeah. people forget different things. Yes, yeah, no. they do. But they you know when you start a show, like you'll learn those things eventually. But like it's probably a good idea to yeah. know something about how to run a show. Also, produce producing aside, just go and watch as oh. much comedy yeah. as humanly. Just fucking be a student. Just take go it take it in. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't hear, <laughs> <laughs> You're, listen to some stand up, watch some stand up, go to see the, the local scene stuff. I mean, this is 100%. Uh, important for where, where you're going to start. It's hard to be, you know, start New Brunswick and try and be an LA comic. You know, yeah, it's, so, I, I, it's not I, how things go. And also if you go to a fucking, a new scene and you start a show, some people in the scene will be like, what the fuck? Who are you? Totally. You know? That so, happen. so you just go hang out and be a part of it and just try to meet people and, you know, if you s- just fucking try to just do, just try to respect the thing you're doing. Absolutely. You know? Try and be say please to everyone, not just Tina Graham. And if you are running a show, bring a spotlight. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> you're coming to this show tonight. Bring a spotlight. If you got one, this is this is airing right now. <laughs> Obviously, it's not, but <laughs> we could use it. Uh, no, so. Okay, so we, I guess we ran through all the mics, right? That's most of the mics. Well, no Sundays. Oh, no, Sunday. Another- on Saturday, yeah. it was mostly shows. That's when I was doing, like, opening for frats and bands and, yeah. you know, basement comedy shows. And right. most of the time, nothing. And just hanging out and going to shows and watching them. Uh, Sundays were cool because Sundays, I was my... I ran a, a thing through the, through the school with my friends who I started comedy with. And it was just basically a, an open mic where we would s- steal a classroom at like oh. at, we would we would leave, go into like the, the, the like the hall like one of the one of those halls of like a school of like this campus yeah and just jiggle the ha- like see what doors were open yeah and then we would put it in the Facebook and be like we're in room four hundred five at Murray Hall today that's come. awesome and then just people would come and we would just do a mic and then there was like there was like a, a critique component to it which I'm not crazy about nowadays. You know, you're starting out. It's I see. Feedback. Mike. It was a feedback. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, it was uh, cool. Uh, we did something like that, too. If I yeah. could tell. So, like, um, I, I was like, you know, what? so I went to back to school, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Went to Temple. And there, uh, I had looked up on the internet, like, there was a, uh, like, a student organization. Yeah. And so I went to it, like, and I, I went back and it was, like, January. It was, like, spring semester. Yeah. So uh, I found this, uh, this student org TU Comedy at Temple University and uh, was run by this guy Michael Troy who was like a sophomore Mm -hmm. and started going to some things and it's like I had been doing stand-up already for like five, six years so it was you know I like had more to say and stuff and not everybody was like getting up I'm like getting up still like all the time and I had all this New York experience etc and it came out like well, why are you the president? What's going on here? And they would say, like, well, there was somebody had started this last year when Mike was a freshman, and he was just attending. Yeah. And then in the fall, he, like, went to the, like, you know, the student center or whatever and was like, hey, whatever happened to that TU comedy? And he was handed a folder and told, you're the president. (laughs) (laughs) They just, nobody had picked it back up. That's, yeah. And so, like, that's what I was walking into. And so we, I was like, well, we got to do a mic. So we're like, we started doing a mic at this place, Maxi's, which was like a pizza place. Yeah. That also had a bar. And so it was right on campus. And it was everybody talking Mm -hmm. over you, packed, but like you couldn't get them to like listen. It was fucking so hard. And then we started getting like I think like hockey started the hockey season or something yeah started. yeah some season started and so we got kicked out and so we started doing it like outside uh, like on <laughs> on campus and then we started doing the thing you were just talking about yeah. which we got started like the next year or whatever we started doing finding classrooms 
and we called it Sit Up Front. Yes. And uh, yeah, it just sort of brought me back. To it's that it's sit up front it, it was a cool era. it's a cool thing to do I think when when you because you know that's one of the it's like a you know it's like a double edged sword with the you know young like college people because a lot of them will. You know, a lot of them will do it once and then never come back or totally. whatever. But it's they're excited about something new, and yeah. it's you know everyone's trying to like meet people. It's been a big school, so it would just fucking be like, we're here today. Come by. You, you know? know who's in that uh, that TU comedy? The first time I I went in, Tyler Wolf. Ah. I've known Tyler Wolf a long time. Interesting. He, what, did he go to the school? He went to Temple. He transferred, and then he moved back to Philly. Oh, cool. He's from Philly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he transferred to. Uh, I always forget the name of it. It's like. Dickinson, I think. It's Ooh. another Pennsylvania school. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to play baseball, this guy. Uh, a dreamer. A dreamer. Anyway, but yeah, uh, so I, I, I love seeing Tyler because yeah. it's like one of those, man, I, we were one of the first people I really met in this town. Certainly when I met you when you were 18 yeah. is a crazy thing. Uh, but I've got a bunch of Philly comics that I feel I yeah. think of like that, you know? Well, that's why I like the Philly scene so much. It's I was just trying a, to think of if anyone yeah. at TU Comedy was still doing it. Yeah, and the, uh, Tyler is definitely uh, up there. He's probably the person who's still doing it the most. The the Philly scene, to me, has... That's why, that's why I love it so much, because it reminds me a lot of New Brunswick in a lot of ways. Sure. Like the uh, walkability, the public transport ability to each thing. Uh, the major clubs in the area and also the thriving like underground indie scene absolutely you know? and it's you know it's kind of like in this east coast it's got yeah. an east coast thing going on so people are like writing a lot and they yeah. want to perform a lot and it's not it's a lot of it's about doing stand-up it's not really just about like well i'm doing everything i act and this is stand-up as a resume thing or whatever you know like there's something east coast about that but it's also a little bit in the shadow of new york city mm-hmm. both of those scenes for sure yeah. are you know in that shadow and it creates a cool underground vibe, it, but it's yeah. like oh, they're, they're cities, you know. There's something going on. They've got clubs. There's something. Yeah. There's not like nobody comes out of there. People exactly, come out of exactly. And it's you know, it's just a good. I th- I think of both of them as extremely good places. New Jersey, not just New Brunswick, but New Jersey and Philly yeah. as extremely good places to start comedy. And they mix, you yes. know, because they're next to each other. Out yeah, yeah. I mean, we how many so we, we do I Philly. Go to New Brunswick pretty regularly. Yeah, I mean, it's not regularly. Yeah. I would go. I would do it. Yeah, I'm in and Philly like four times this month. It's the yeah, fucking Philly, yeah. Well. I, you know, uh, so right? Yeah, exactly. I go down all the time. Yeah. Still, it's uh, you know, I love Philadelphia, yeah. and that's just one of the reasons I moved to Jersey. It's yeah. like, oh well, I could be in New Jersey. I'm already out of the city. That's why I love Jersey. You can get. You can, yeah, you can go to fucking PA, New York City, Delaware, you know, do whatever right. the fuck you want. And there's a, there's several scenes, and I'm sure we'll get to them on this podcast, like, you know, there's a, a Lehigh Valley scene, yeah. you know, there's Philly, obviously, there's stuff, like, deeper in, like, kind of, you know, Pennsylvania. Yeah. New, I mean, fucking New Hope and shit. New like, Hope there's a bunch of cool stuff going on. Going um, on Emmaus, sure. there's, like, a bunch of, like, really cool, yeah. just, like, one, you know, one-nighter, like, road spots you Absolutely. can hit, you know. It's... Yeah. Comedy is clubs. pretty neat, yeah, yeah and some clubs, of course. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so then uh, what? This was so 2019. Are you what year in college are you? Uh, I transferred you from know? community college. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, so I'm a junior at this time, and 2018, 2019, I graduated from Rutgers like. Like January 2020. Oh, so funny. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wait, also um. You, so this time you're new to the town. It's not like you had been at Rutgers. Yeah, I'm new. Not doing stand up. So the whole reason I started stand up, interestingly enough, I was like, I had no friends. Huh. And I was like, I can't think of a better time to start doing this thing that I've always wanted to do than at a place where nobody knows who the fuck I am. Yeah. And then I just started doing it. That's crazy because you're such a dickhead. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, everybody loves you. But it's it's it, one of those things, and it, it, ironically. The my closest friends were like thirty five year old like uh, comedians. I know, man. <laughs> and like I'm just hanging out with them, and I've seen like my like these kids like going to Dages, and I'm like going to a fucking gig in like fucking Delaware or something. I know the feeling, man. Yeah. I was, when I started, I was like eighteen, and I was hanging out, and nobody was under yeah. twenty one doing stand up. Yeah. So I was hanging out with twenty seven year olds that were all like telling jokes about like I'm gonna die this year because I'm <laughs> Jimi Hendrix and uh, and you believed it yeah <laughs> because they were fucking drunks. I remember so. yeah I remember like telling people my age and they would be like upset. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was also like go- getting into bars because you're doing comedy yeah. you're used to it and I never thought about like I mean I thought about it, but like I never really thought about how easy it was to like just be hanging out with yeah. people that were older than me. 
you're just getting into bars, drinking, and doing comedy or not. Yeah. And then you, I'd try with my other friends that were not uh, hanging out with 27-year-olds, and, like, none of us would get in. Yeah. I'm like, it works for me on <laughs> uh, Saturday uh, when I'm with a bunch of other people, you know? Say uh, you're the yeah. entertainment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. There was a time I did that, like, when I uh, went up in Philly – Doing a mic, I had like not even uh, dropped out of school yet. I think, or I, I, ju- I just had, or something like that. So it was really young, and uh, I <laughs> went up, to- totally lied about my age uh, to <laughs> to I forget. It was at Lickety Split, which was like on South Street and Fourth, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, I at went a, it's at a bar. It's a bar, bar. and all of my uh, jokes were about like underage drinking, but. I'm <laughs> And so, and like, I swear to God, the owner of the bar came up to me and was basically like, you're not fooling anybody. Here's a free one. And it was like, it was another time. Like, it sounds like that would be 1981. It was 2005. You know, it's ridiculous how, uh, like, they were giving me, that's, the owner gave me a drink because I was underage. That's incredible. That bar, if you can believe it. Was on Bar Rescue. Oh, did they make it? <laughs> no. No. They changed their name immediately to something like Fourth and Gold or whatever. Or Fourth and State, I think. Mm-hmm. And then it closed within a year, became Milk Boy South, and Ugh. then we started running the show there. So not only like full, full circle. circle, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was get, then getting more free drinks there. M- Milk Boy South sounds familiar. Is it still yeah, there? Still, they do a sh- there's a show there now. Have I been there with you? I might have. Not with me. Because uh-huh. uh, I haven't been in a while. And there's another Milk Boy. That's why there's Milk Boy South. There's like two, I think. I love a, I love a Milk Boy. We used to run a show at Milk Boy in the Center City. That's more of like a rock venue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philly's got a ton of venues. That's what I'm, about I'm very fond of Philly. Where yeah. New Brunswick, I'm sure, has like bars, but they're all college bars. Yeah, almost all of them are townie bars. Yeah, and then you have that's one reason you wind up in basements because there aren't really a lot of performance. Also, venues. It, but the thing is, New Brunswick is like the basement theme scene for music. Yeah, was. Absolutely thriving. Yeah, that's cool. I would too. go. I would go to basement like punk hardcore shows like every weekend. Yeah, I wasn't doing stand up just because it was just fucking fun, and they were like mostly like donation, like you know, f- give um, a suggested donation like five bucks for the bucket to get in. Yeah, you know, and just bring your own beer and just get fucked up and hang out with you know people and just chill. And then we were just kind of started doing it for comedy. Crazy, you that's know? cool. Yeah, I love also that Jersey is so punk. You know, yeah, it is like cool. such a punk thing going yeah. on that and has for a long time yeah. that uh, I just love that it still like thrives like that. Yeah. Like, there's something about New Jersey where it's like, yeah, you have to go into a basement or somewhere that someone's squatting it's, and are used to or whatever. It, it was super cool because, you know, I was I was still pretty new to comedy in college, obviously. And then the pandemic happened. And I remember listening to podcasts about like comedians being like professionals, you know, being like, Oh, I got to climb a ladder to like, I got to go on a roof to do a show. And I'm like, I've been, I'm ready for this. I've been doing this my whole fucking career. This, yeah. is, this is the way to be, you know, I'm, I'm going and I'm going on roofs and fucking underground pools and shit. Oh, that's so funny, man. Yeah. Uh, well, that's cool. Well, we got a show soon. So I probably, you Should know, wrap it up. Well, do you want to uh, mention anything else about New Brunswick's uh, scene and stuff like that? Uh oh, the it's dead. Oh really? <laughs> is that really? Is that yeah. How you feel about it? it, dude? It. I mean, there's no. Th- yeah, I, I did. I not say this. No. Oh, it's there's all those mics are done except for George Strico up on Sunday. Yeah, that still happened. The Scarlet Pup. No one runs. Stress there's doesn't have a mic. There's anymore. no stress that's mic. Like the center of the universe we were talking about. So that's crazy. It, it was really of a that's. Guy. It's like it very much is not a thing anymore. Like if you say in your Brunswick scene, I'm from the New Brunswick scene. People would be like. I don't know what that is. Uh, the really, whereas like there's still a scene in Asbury. As it's pretty much the scenes in Jersey now are like here and Jersey City, Jersey City and uh, like Asbury, and then like there's some and then like there's some scattering around. But absolutely, I found moving up here from Philly that North Jersey was like its own scene. Like North you Jersey, could go because you could even and it and it extends yeah. to the. So like I used to say to people. Uh, you can go to Nyack, New York on Monday. Yeah. You can go to New Brunswick or Asbury Park on Tuesday, yeah. and you'll see some of the same people. Even yeah. though that's a long drive, even from Jersey City, which is pretty centrally located compared yeah. uh, to other places that are people are in the suburbs. But that's how it is. And, I mean, I was almost exclusively talking about Jesse Montanez, apparently. <laughs> but, you know, it was like... Yeah, that's where he started, yeah. Yeah, there were guys that were, like, after it in that kind of world and they would hit everything you know that that is 
that is one thing that I think the North Jersey scene is kind of uh, missing is there's really no mics. There's like, there's mostly shows, which is great. But, you know, if anyone's listening to this, you should start a mic because I, I don't I don't want to. Yeah, none of us want to. So but, that's, uh, that's yeah. the thing. So that's actually my, ironically, that's my advice is don't go to start a room. That's my <laughs> Let me go up whatever. <laughs> yeah. Do a bucket or whatever, but not for us. Uh, yeah. No, uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, there are definitely mics. And, I mean, we have other clubs now. There's a dojo of comedy out in, like, Morris Plains. It's the Battle Morris of that Town, room. Which is its own, like, kind of area. It's the best. Uh, super great, great club. That, you know, Mike over there that uh, owns it is the best. Um, and they're doing good things and experimenting with new things all the time. It's it's cool. Their calendar has exploded in the last year. Um it's great. They've been doing comedy a bunch for a mm-hmm. long time, actually. But, like, now it's really, really full. Yeah. Uh, I know. And Jersey City has a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of those people from New Brunswick wound up moving up here. Yep. And from the shore scene, Ashbury Park, that what people kind of describe as the shore scene, yep. a lot of them wound up in Jersey City. So there is an epicenter here. Definitely. It's a good place to be. You know, you can your proximity to New York is unrivaled. And you can – it's like right. it's like how you can – you know, we were saying before, we can I can do – uh, any given week, I can be in you know Brooklyn and then Philly and then Jersey City and then upstate or wherever. I know? used to say, uh, and I guess it's still pretty true. I used to say like my week is basically like I'm in Jersey doing st- spots like three times a week. I'm in New York twice a week. I'm in yeah. Philly once a week. I'm in another city. Exactly. Uno- that uh, you know. And you know, it's it's kind of nice. It's it's. Yeah. I I I really like that we're, where the scene is right now with Jersey City. I think so too. I mean, uh, yeah, I like it too. Again, I, I you know the, a lot of that New Brunswick life yeah. just came here. So which is nice. Yeah, you know, we're experiencing a lot of those people, and like they still come up even if they live in in New Brunswick. Still, they they come pretty like, again. The the North Jersey is its own mega scene. Yeah. And so we see a lot of those people. It's not, you know, you still meet people that are new that are down there. Uh, but, you know, and, and we get less new people. It's expensive over here. It's not a college town. Uh, people that move to Jersey City are kind of like, they're from parts of New Jersey, but they're also from New York. It's definitely. I started. I'm actually. I do. Yeah, it's harder. Even in New York, there are. Even in New York City. Yeah, people that move there, you know, they're all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I see. I, I don't know. Like that, you still have that here, but there's just nowhere to like get up. Who were some of your contemporaries like down in New Brunswick? Like who were the? You're talking about the people you were looking up to, but who was kind of, you know? Uh, Devin Hall. Did he started before you a little bit. He started maybe. He started around the same time. Around the same time. I met Devin at the co-op. Okay. Uh, we went to Rutgers. At, uh, no, he, was, he was doing the same thing I was doing. Right. Yeah, funny. And then I was like, okay. And then <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. And then, uh, and then we, you know, became good friends. And then uh, a little later, um, you know, Keegan, uh, we hung out with him. And then we were kind of going out. And then, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, there's there's other people, but the only ones that are like put in that I talk to like literally are Devin and Keegan. And you guys started a show, right? Essentially, or you and Devin? So, me and Devin and Keegan. Yeah. Twenty twenty, um, but they had moved into the college house that I was living in. Oh, okay. So they were still in college, right? So they were like, "Do you want to start an outside show?" And I was like, "Sure." It was called Shrubs. It was very fun. It built was like a stage outside. Built, built Keegan's dad built the stage. Oh wow! It was very. I got. I can show you pictures of it. It was very very nice. I did it once. And yeah, yeah, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want pictures for the. For the fans, oh, you yeah, maybe for the viewers. For the um, but it was cool because like people would, 
you know, like it was very like there wasn't a lot of shit going on in Jersey. There was a lot in the city in New York, but there really wasn't a lot of stuff going on in in Jersey that was like you know, COVID. Blah blah, but that's about it. Oh, and that's part of why you did that, twenty twenty. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it was outside. Yeah, and I was I was afraid of killing my parents. You know. Yeah, I get that. I'm a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always thought that about uh, Yeah. The, uh, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was Shrubs, and then I, I didn't realize you were already here. That makes sense. Yeah. Wise. Well, the, the first mic I did here was McGinley. Right. That's where I met you. That's where we met. Yeah. That was around that time. Here's another question I had, because you guys do sketch and stuff like that. Yeah. Were you guys doing sketch, or were you doing other things besides stand-up? We, we were always, Writing, we were like, you know, other projects. me and Devin were focused on stand-up. We were, like, obsessed with doing, you know, there was this kind of, like, uh, there was this, like, philosophy where it was, like, you need to be doing, like, 30 mics a week and shit. Right. This was a pre co I mean, people still yeah. definitely... See, people still this. do it, but this was, like, this was, like, very much, like, uh, like, I remember, like, I remember, like, hearing, like, people say, like, that, what you need to be hitting, getting up as much as humanly possible, which I realize now is probably detrimental, I think, but, uh, yeah. you know, getting quality stage time, you know, it's, it's, it's... To it's each their balance. own. You know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to focus. When you focus on just going, like, I have to get up as much as possible, then, you, yeah, you, a lot of that is terrible time. It, it, it maybe isn't making you better all the time. It, comedy is, maybe it's making you look bad. It's one of those things where you don't have those instincts yet. It's hard to know. It's very hard to know. It's hard to have instincts. You yeah. Know? It's, uh, it's an unnatural thing. So Devin and I were just solely obsessed with going. We would like, my last year of, I had a 4.0 GPA. Wow. And my, my, the year I started being like, I, I'm like, all I can think about is stand-up comedy. I think I, I had like, I, I, gra I graduated like a 3.5 like or something. Oh, like, wow. Which is still fine, but it's like. Yeah, of course. But like, I just was, I just, the comparison of just me being like, I don't give a shit about anything anymore. Um. But so we would just go to the city a lot. We would do a lot of comedy in the area. And then uh, we met Keegan and Keegan and I would like make stuff like kind of like on and off. But like, you know, there was like the idea of like posting short form content was like not really a thing. Yeah. Back then. So we would just post like stuff to like YouTube, but it was like no one was seeing it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, pandemic happened. Um, and then that's when we started doing it more. Got you. Yeah. Well, uh, do you want to plug some stuff? You guys do sketches now. We, Keegan and I have a sketch channel called Dim Booper. Uh, we are also uh, comedians. We're co-headlining uh, New Hampshire uh, and Empire Comedy Club Maine on May 5th in New Hampshire. Wait, I get the act. You do whatever you want. Like, Wait, also, what's your website and stuff like oh. that? And I will be doing uh, Ruby Room in New Hampshire on May 2nd, Empire Comedy Club, uh, May 24th, Boston Comedy Club, May 25th, and we're also going to the Willis Group Yard, May 3rd and 4th, Helium in St. Louis. That's true. And then May 17th and 18th, uh, Church, Church of Satire. Satire. Hanover, Pennsylvania. And if you want to see me do some stuff, I'm going to be at Punchline Philly with uh, Rachel Feinstein. Uh, April 25th to the 27th. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. Colin Armstrong Comedy .com. And Colin Armstrong with two G's on Instagram. Yes. Right? And Dim Boopers if you want to see some sketches. And follow Keegan Tyndall as well. You probably already do. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, get on. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to be the last uh, <laughs> on the bandwagon. Uh, yeah. I'm Alex Grubard on everything. G-R-U-B-A-R-D. And uh, AlexGrubard.com for all my dates. I've got States coming up. I'm headlining uh, Helium St. Louis uh, in the garage. Uh, I've got a headlining Church of Satire. I've got a bunch of he other headlining dates uh, on the books. Those are coming up soon, though, in May. And just go to alexgrubard.com. All my dates are up there. I got, I believe I counted today, I think I have 39 gigs, if you can believe it. Uh, and Pet Shop. I can't. First and third Thursdays of the month. Boom. Uh, yeah, so here in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, the epicenter of comedy in the world. It's a seedster place. And uh, we love you. Thanks so much for listening. Like, rate, review, subscribe. And remember, keep comedy shaking, not stirred. Bam. Peace. Peace.